Hi, my name is Nicole. Welcome to my channel, Travel to Money. In this video, I'm going to go over the credit cards I use for cash back, give you tips for how to make the most of your cash back, and I'll show you exactly how much money I made last year from cash back alone. Then I'm going to show you how you can use this to help build your retirement. Could cashback cards give you a half a million dollars over time? Well, if you're smart, they can, and I'll show you how. If you are new here, I have created this channel to help you learn about how to travel, adventure, and have fun on the road to financial independence. I have traveled the world, I own a couple of houses in Spain, and I'm on a creative journey to financial independence. I believe the road to financial freedom can and should be fun. I hope you'll subscribe and join me on this journey no matter where you are starting from. A few years ago, I got into credit cards that offered great cashback opportunities, and I want to show you how you can do the same. But before I dive into the details, I want to offer a couple of warnings and disclaimers. First, I am not a financial advisor, and before you get into anything financial, you should always do your own research. Secondly, if you do not have financial discipline, don't dare open a credit card. The purpose of using a credit card for cashback is only valuable if you are basically using it in the same way that you use use a debit card. Let me give you an example. When I'm ready to pay my electric bill, I have the money in my bank account to pay for it, but I pay for it with my credit card. I should also mention that I don't pay any fees to pay my electric bill with a credit card. If there were a fee, I wouldn't pay for it that way. So once I make the payment for my electric bill on my credit card, then I make a payment from my bank account to my credit card for the same amount. Basically, I never have to pay interest on my credit card because I only use it for transactions that I already have money for in my bank account. This takes a lot of discipline. If you don't have discipline, having a credit card of any kind could be really bad for you and land you in a lot of debt. However, for my financially disciplined people, using certain credit cards can earn you extra money. Let me start by saying that although I might eventually add some affiliate links in the description of this video, at the time of this recording, I am not affiliated with any of the cards I'm going to mention. These are simply the cards I've used over the last few years for my own cash back. If I end up being able to add any of them as an affiliate, I'll say so in the description. So a lot of people are really big on using credit cards for travel rewards, and I know it has its place, but that's not really my angle. And you might be wondering why, since I am all about travel. Well, for me, there are two things I value. One is the cheapest travel options, two, simplicity. I am not the person who wants to keep up with a whole lot of different cards, have to book my travel through certain websites, transfer points from one place to another, or any other number of hoops in order to get travel benefits. I'm not generally booking travel to resorts or using hotels. It's just all too much for me to keep up with. So rather than focus on travel points, I prefer to go for the best cash back options. On a side note, I do have a Southwest credit card through Chase that I will probably be getting rid of soon. It is the only card I have that has an annual fee, but the fee pays for itself with points that can be used for a flight. I got a free flight out of it last year, so it's fine and dandy, but it's not a focal point for me. I rarely fly Southwest, even though I like their airline. They just aren't cheap enough anymore unless I need to fly somewhere with a lot of luggage. Usually I'm flying Spirit, Frontier, or Allegiant for domestic flights. And in the future, I'm planning to be flying overseas a whole lot more, so I just don't know that a Southwest card is worth it for me. Okay, so now let me tell you about my cashback cards. My favorite that I've used for years now is City Double Cash Card. They give you 1% for every dollar purchased and 1% for every payment made. That means you get 2% on any purchase once you've made that payment. Now, I know with some other cards, you might get more in a certain category, but for me, I like to keep it simple. I get 2% on everything. I don't have to think about what category is the focus for the month or using a certain card for certain types of purchases. Because of this, I use my city card for almost every purchase I make. All of my monthly bills are set up on this card. My gym membership, my electricity bill, my phone bill, my charitable donations, and any other recurring bill. Anytime I go out to eat, pay for gas, or make any other purchase with a physical card, generally speaking, this is the card I use. I'm going to give you some other tips to consider about ways to make even more with your cashback cards, but for now, let's look at my city total cashback for last year. I made $556.32 in cashback from 
Farm City. And I paid zero dollars in interest because I always pay my card in full every month. Now, my second favorite card is the Walmart Capital One credit card, and here is why. When I order from walmart.com or the app on my phone, including pickup and delivery orders, Walmart gives me 5% cash back. And it is for this reason that I moved away from Amazon and almost all of my order and grocery purchases are now on walmart.com. Every week, instead of going to the grocery store, I place an order on Sunday night for my weekly groceries, and then I drive up the road on Monday to pick them up without ever having to deal with going into a Walmart. If you make a purchase in the store, it's only 2% cash back. Then if you make any other purchase anywhere else, they still give you 1% cash back. Last year, I made a total of $172.35 in cash back from Walmart alone. Plus, ordering grocery pickup really simplified my shopping experience. The next in line for my favorite cashback credit cards is my Chase Freedom Unlimited card. The main thing about this card that keeps it simple is that you get 1.5% cash back for every purchase. In addition to this, you can also get 3% cash back on certain categories. It looks like at the time of this recording, they are offering a $200 bonus in addition to 5% cash back on grocery purchases. Those kind of offers may change over time, but the reason I like it is just because of the simplicity of 1.5% cash back. Chase isn't the primary card that I use, but I still made $233.79 last year just from my Chase Freedom Unlimited card. If you're not a math person, and when I say 1.5% or 2%, and that doesn't compute quickly in your head, let me just give you some cash numbers to help you understand. On my city card, when I get 2% cash back, that means for every $100 I spend, I'm going to get $2. So if I spend $1,000 on that card every month, I'll get $20 back in cash, all for doing a whole lot of nothing. Okay, now let me show you the last card that I use for cash back, and that is my USAA Platinum Visa credit card. They give me 1% cash back, which isn't crazy, but if for some reason I can't use my other cards or don't have them available, this one is a great backup. Last year I made $31.18 on that card. So, in total last year, I made $993.64 in cash back. If it took a lot of work or time, I wouldn't be recommending this, but I'm not even a big spender, and it doesn't really take any effort. Now, because I'm not a big spender, I'll make some recommendations to you for how to better take advantage of your cash back cards. My spending alone wouldn't amount to much, so I look for other ways that can really pay off for me, especially big purchases. Let me give you an idea. I rent my house and pay rent to my landlord every month, but sometimes repairs or lawn care needs to be done on the house. If I happen to be the one to set it up, I let my landlord know that I'll just pay for it and deduct it from my rent. Then I send him a receipt of the payment so he has it for his tax records. So for example, I pay $75 twice per month to pay for lawn care. Because I get 2% cash back, that means I make $3 per month by paying for the lawn care myself and then just taking the amount out of my rent check. Another time, we had to have the septic tank pumped. I paid around $500 on my card and then sent my landlord the receipt. That earned me $10 for doing almost nothing. Another example are plane tickets. If you are traveling with a friend that doesn't have credit cards or doesn't have credit card benefits, you can pay for all of your tickets and expenses and then have them pay you back in cash. For example, my friend is going to Spain with me next month. Our tickets were $500 each. I paid for her ticket and she sent me cash, which means I'll get an extra $10 back. If you have an employer that sends you different places or that you make purchases for, if it makes sense and you have permission, you can make employment purchases on your card and then get reimbursed for those purchases. Like I said before, it's the big purchases where this makes the biggest bang for your buck. Now that we've talked about the cards I recommend, let's talk about what kind of credit score you need to qualify for each of them. For the City Double Cash Card, you'll need a credit score over 700. For the Walmart Capital One card, you'll need a credit score of 640 or higher. For Chase Freedom Unlimited, you'll need 690 or higher. For a USAA Platinum Visa, you'll need at least a 680. It sounds like the Walmart Capital One card might be the easiest to start with if you're still working on building your credit.
We'll have to talk about how to build your credit in another video, but if you don't have any credit or your credit isn't good, don't give up. Trust me, when you focus, it won't take that long to get it in order. Okay, remember how I mentioned using cash back for retirement? This is especially if you are that young person who makes excuses and you're not really setting investment money aside. Let's take a look at the investment calculator on my website, traveltomoney.com. If you were making $1,000 per year like me in cash back and you invested that money instead of spending it, how much would you have over time? Let's put $1,000 in the initial investment and then let's put $1,000 as the annual contribution. We're going to put a 10% annual interest rate return since that's what the S&P 500 has returned on average over the last 30 years. If you started doing this at 20 years old, when you are 60, you'd have almost half a million dollars. That's half of a retirement just from investing cash back. Pretty crazy. And you know what's crazier? Not taking advantage of cash back or investing. If you are new to investing, trust me, it's as easy as using a checking account. I've got a video right up here where you can learn the basics of investing and get started. What do you think? What cards do you use for cash back? Let me know about it in the comments. If you have enjoyed this video, like it, say hello in the comments and subscribe to join me every day where travel and adventure build financial freedom. I can't wait to see where your dreams will take you.